Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to make Don Diablo style music that sounds like this. Oh, I hit him like this. Now these are some of the techniques I use to produce music professionally and we go into them in more depth in a couple of my courses like Music Theory for EDM Producers and the Ultimate EDM Mixing Course which you can find out more about below. Now Don Diablo's style is quite bouncy and nice and melodic and really energetic so we're going to go into all of these different techniques. We are going to go into the music theory, we are going to go into a bit of sound design and mixing, we're going to work on the kick, we're going to work on a Don Diablo style synth lead and bass and and some piano stabs and a big build up and then a fat drop as well. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you like this and you want me to make it into a full start to finish course, let me know in the comments below and I shall make it happen. Now I will be going through this in Ableton Live, but it doesn't matter if you're using FL Studio or Logic. The fundamentals to produce music like Don Diablo remain the same. Now don't forget to download the free gift I've got below this video. And if you like it, subscribe to my channel and share it with your mates. And without further ado, let's hop into Ableton Live and get it done. So first port of call is the melody which is mimicked in the piano and the bass line and the synth as well. So we've got this. Which makes it nice and simple. And really bold. So this is written in B flat minor and if you find that a bit complicated you could just write it in A minor because uh, that's only got white notes and then you can just grab everything after you've done it and uh, press up or down in your door to kind of transpose it to whichever key you want it in. So all of those notes are from within the key of B flat minor so if you were to draw them all out Okay, they are all the notes of B flat minor. So if we press fold, we can see that our melody just falls complete within it. So what you can do is you can draw out the rhythm of your melody on one note first, if you just want to get the rhythm dun, 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 dun. And then you can use this template idea, which I've used loads before by pressing fold. And then you can just kind of move up and down some of those notes until they're in the melody you want. Let's just delete that. And I've just copied that from the piano sound, which is just a sample, doubled it up an octave below with a slightly different sample, just to give it some weight and body. And I've done that with the riff sound as well, which is actually two sounds layered up as well. We got this, which is done in massive. And we've got this sound that I wanted to make in Operator. And you can see I've got these effects and chorus. Didn't use the phaser in the end. Some overdrive and saturator just to give it some body and some weight. And then take out that low end that's not needed. Lovely. So they are our two lead sounds. We've got our piano. And lay it all together, it sounds like this. And I've got that kind of skippy groove to it because I have used the groove, a groove template in Ableton Live, but if you're using FL Studio, I expect you've got shuffle, I think a global shuffle at the top. And uh, in Logic, you get these Groove files as well. And you can just open them up, Browse Groove Library, library go to Swing and Groove. Um, I usually use MPC, which is an old drum machine. And then I choose 16, Swing, 60. And then I can kind of tweak it. But I just drag, you just drag that onto all of the clips that you want this swing applied to. And this is the difference. This is where it's most uh, notable. So it's instead of da 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 da, it's da 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 da. And that is that. So next we have the kick. I always put things into a drum rack, but you can just use audio if you prefer. I've got a uh, just a nice kick going on. Nice and hard. And then we're going to work out the bass. And as I said, I've used the same um, notes as the melody. 
just to keep things really simple and strong in that Don Diablo style. And I've got a sub bass. And what I've done for the sub bass is I've actually dropped some of the note an octave down because this is where they were if it's exactly the same as the piano melody. Which I think is a bit high for sub bass so I've just dropped some of them down an octave below just to keep things nice and bassy. But in the mid bass uh, I have kept the melody exactly the same. And that is to give the mid bass is to give it more presence and body. And to stop them clashing in the mid bass, I have just I've EQ'd out a lot actually. I've EQ'd out all the sub bass below about 74 hertz. And I've rolled off a lot of the high end as well, just because I wanted that kind of weighty body. And this filter here is used a bit later on for uh, automation so I'll show you that a bit later. Yeah so the kick and the bass they have to work well together so let's get them rocking. And what I've done I've added a sidechain compressor this is my sidechain trigger channel you can use the LFO tool by X for records or you can use the Nicky Romero kickstart uh, whatever it's called it's basically a sidechain plugin, but I, I like to use my compressor. So I've just got sidechain audio coming from SC. I'm sure you all know this by now, guys. And it gives it uh, a lot of space for the uh, kick to come through. I've also applied that to my piano and my top riff too. And the presence that you can hear, the kind of, that's in mono, so it still sounds good. Always check in mono. But I've added some reverb in the aux channels just to give them a bit of space and make them sound like they're coming from the same place. So I've got a shorter reverb, that soloed, and a longer reverb which I use for the piano and I've actually got a side chain compressor on the long reverb as well. Okay, so that is that. Next is drums and the groove. So we start off on the drop with just a click and a clap. And I've offset them slightly to give it that kind of loose feel. So let's just solo those. And I vary it every two, every quarter bar or every half bar just to make it a, sound a bit more natural. So you've got the finger click and you've got the clap. I've also doubled that up with my own sample that I made called Big Clap just to give it a bit more weight. And that reverb is actually in my sample, so you can see I've got this long wave file here. And that is because the Don Diablo sound has got lots of interest in the rhythm, um, lots of little suck back sounds, suck back sounds, hello, and um, like reverse claps and whatnot, so I've added one here as well. Just to give it a bit more interest when there aren't many beats going on. And then in the post drop, you've got the actual groove comes in. So I've got two loops that I found here, um, just on splice. One of them, just a 909 open hat loop and a shuffle as well. And I've added a bit of compression to the shuffle just to bring up the, uh, the lower beat. So it kind of squashes it all together a bit and together all the drums sound like this. So on the drop. And then the post drop. And I drop the, I do a little uh, kick skip there and drop the first beat of the bar. 
in that Don Diablo style. I've actually been doing that for years as well, mate. So, in fact, kudos. I probably the first time I heard it was uh, by the Swedish House Mafia. Let's have a quick look at the sound design. I mean, the bass, uh, the sub bass is just a bog standard operator synth with a sine wave. With a tiny bit of release to stop it clicking. Like that. A bit smoother. I always set my basses to just have one voice, so monophonic, just so they don't overlap and get messy. The mid bass. It's just a bass sample, but simple, but I've just EQ'd out a lot of those frequencies that I don't, I don't want. Piano, yeah, as I said, there were just two piano samples f somewhere on Splice I got them, but I've added reverb as well. I've grouped them together and added reverb to the high and the low piano together in that group. And now the WAP sound, which is really important for that Don Diablo sound. It's not exactly Don Diablo, but it's it's got that kind of vibe to it. And I've got two. I wanted to do it all in Ableton Live stock plugins, but you know it was it was hard. And actually, you if you're going to invest in any plugins, I recommend investing in one or two premium synths like Serum or a Massive or Silent, but just just one or two of them, and then get to know them really well because uh, you are limited with the stock uh, synth plugins, unless you know how to use them, but um, I prefer the interfaces on these premium ones. Oh, I made that. I made this. So uh, yeah, I've got a couple of uh, oscillators with these cool different waveforms that Massive has and then I have simply assigned an LFO to the amplitude and to a filter cutoff to give it that wow wow kind of sound like a dub bassy sound and for the second WAP sound which I did do this in the operator and again similar thing couple of oscillators you got a saw you got a square and a sine wave and again, I've just kind of added a envelope on the filter, a frequency filter, a low pass to get that wow. And then I've added some chorus, overdrive and saturator just to beef it up a bit, baby. And then the break riff, which I'll show you after we've done this drop. And now that is all of the sounds in our drop apart from the little vocal hit. So let's listen to it so far. Oh, I've added, I, I made some white noise there at the beginning just with my uh, white noise pack that I designed using an oscillator. Got these controls. Um, let me know in the comments if you want it. I'll just post a link to it. You can download it. Um. So you can hear I've added a few extra of those WAP hits as well. just to give it a bit of interest. Vocal samples. This is an old school Laletta Halloway. I can't remember her name, but like a, this is a properly old school sample. And uh, I added a lot of reverb to that on the AUX channel and a compressor that is sidechain compressed from the Woo itself just to give it space to breathe. So it's the, the reverb kind of sucks back in after it hits and then a gate just to cut off the uh, tail that we don't really need. And then I sampled that and then I did a reverse reverb. You probably heard this before. Just to lead into it. Cool. Okay, guys, that's the drop. Let's move on to the break because you ain't got no drop without a break beforehand. It's all about the contrast. So let's look at the theory. As we already know, this is in B flat minor. So we're going to do the break in the same key and we're going to use a lot of the same instruments as well. So first is the piano chords. Let's have a look at these. Nice, nice baby. Okay, so on the low chords, I just 
changed the pattern a little bit from the drop. So this is the drop. And it's exactly the same key, it is B minor, uh, sorry, B flat minor. And to build the chords, what you can do is you can just copy and paste all the bass notes. I've gone into the higher piano sound. And then you can copy and paste the bass notes. You can see them there. And then what you can do is just count up two notes in the key that you're working in. So if you draw out the whole template of B minor, uh, B flat minor again. And I copy and paste that to an octave below, press fold. You can see all of these chords, because there are no gaps here, see if one of the chords had a note like this, it would show up as a gap here in the template. So we know because there are no gaps that all of these notes are within the key of B flat minor. And then what you can do is to make the chords, if you've got the bass notes, so we'll do that again just so you can see, grab the bass notes that we've drawn in, copy and paste them, count up two notes in between each one. And if you do it up again, you get a seventh chord. And when you've drawn them in, you can start moving some of them down an octave, and then you've got what's known as inverted chords. And it makes things a bit more interesting. So here's one I made earlier, using that exact technique. And I've just copied those notes for the bass as well. And I've filtered out, this is, I've just used the mid bass for this to make the impact bigger when the sub bass comes in only on the drop. And for the break riff, this is a completely different instrument from the uh, riff we've got on the drop, which is this. And I, this is made up of one part, this new synth in, in Ableton 10, which I kind of remember what it's called, Wavetable, I think. And then the I've layered it up with a silent sound as well that I made. And there are effects within these patches. So you can see there's distortion. And that's what gives it that kind of grungy sound. And I've added distortion to this one. With the amp um, plugin, which is from Ableton Live. And then when you layer them up together, you get this. And you can see what I've done here is I've compressed them together after grouping them just to glue them together a bit and then I've done some reductive EQ uh, surgical EQ to just get rid of some of the harsh frequencies so this is what it sounds like without that EQ if you've got good headphones you'll hear the difference and I did that by basically doing this so you select a frequency range you boost it, give it a nice narrow cue, sweep, until you hear some harsh frequency and then you can just knock it, notch it down a couple of dB um, and yeah, make it sound a bit nicer. After that, it's just a case of adding the impact and uprisers, just dropping in samples. I mean, you, you guys know how this works. Let's just make sure I've turned all my effects back on.
For the female vocal riff here, I just chopped up a vocal sample I got from somewhere, uh, probably Splice. It's done pretty roughly because I was in a hurry, but uh, after that I just added another vocal, like standard vocal drop. I hit him like this. So all together it sounds like this. Got the snare roll, there's a pitch bend. If you look here, you can see I've got a couple of buses as well, which is where I route the kick and the bass to one bus. And that's just so I can press them together with this glue compressor, which is like the Waves SSL compressor, but it's free with Ableton. Just a couple of dB gain reduction there, and then I make it up. And that just glues them together a bit as on the drum bus as well. I've actually added a limiter just to take in any stray peaks. So let's see what happens here. And this is all the drums apart from the kick, because that's already rooted to where the bass is. Yeah, so on that intro, there's a little bit of gain reduction. Um, and that's just so I can get the final mix even louder, because I don't have these stray transient peaks. And after that, just add a little bit of rudimentary mastering. Glue compressor, ozone imager to rein in that low end, keep it more mono. And then a, another Pro L2 from FabFilter. And when you put it all together, this is what you got. Now obviously there is a lot more to creating a full track than what I've shown you here today. Uh, there's a lot more to composition, a lot more to mixing, mastering and sound design. So if you want to get more information about that, be sure to check out my website edmtips.com. There you have it guys, that is how to produce music like Don Diablo. I hope you got a lot from this video. Again, don't forget to subscribe if you like. And until next time, cheers and happy producing. <laughs>